Hello, and welcome back to my workshop. Today I'm very excited, because I'm collaborating with an amazing friend. I reached out Hannah from HU Dolls right after the final boss challenge earlier this year, to have a one-on-one -on -one collaboration. She has such a unique artistic style, and I'm such a fan. So, after brainstorming a little, we both decided to pay an homage to one of my favorite MUAs, Jupiter. He is a very conceptual makeup artist. He has such a good eye and infinite talent. I'll leave the link to his Instagram in the description box. You'll be in for a treat. So for this collaboration, Hannah and yours truly had to choose one of our favorite Jupiter looks, so that we later translate it into doll form. The one I pick is this golden skull king. The beauty of the symmetry and that gold popping like crazy over the black skin is so freaking perfect. So come with me, let's begin. I want him to have human proportions. That's why I decided to use this BMR 1959 candle. I painted with spray paint, but as I expected, the extreme movement of these dolls act like a double-edged sword. Obviously, the best way to keep those joints painted is by painting them with fabric dye. Unfortunately, I couldn't find those special dyes. And no matter how many times I painted the joints with permanent marker, they are so tight that the slightest movement chipped off the paint. But well, that's a problem we will solve with our friend Photoshop. Meanwhile, I'll paint the entire head with black acrylic paint. I didn't use the spray paint here, because I got some kind of a texture on the body, and I have more control with the acrylics. I got almost full opacity with one layer, but I gave it two, just in case. Next, Jupiter is wearing a pair of sclera black contacts. So with pink color, I'm barely drawing a line to mark the waterline just to give it a hint that there is an actual eye there. Later, with a golden pencil, I'm starting to sketch the skull. I want it to be as precise with the symmetry as possible. Once done, I'll start applying the golden acrylic paint. I decided to begin with the teeth, because that area is the only one that I needed to be very precise. Once the teeth are done, I begin to paint a thin line on the eye socket. and later on the cheekbones. I'm doing this to mark some kind of a limit. And next, I'm starting to fill all the negative space with dots. Lots, lots and lots of dots. I really thought this was going to be very easy, but turns out that even making something look messy requires of you to be very careful. All those dots and splats of paint must be painted carefully so it looks intentional. Other way, it could end up looking very unpolished. It might look like it was easy, but it took me some time. I really love this golden acrylic paint. It is very shiny and rich, but to give it some extra shine, I'm applying my golden nail powder on some areas. This will add more dimension. Was it worth it? No, absolutely not. In pictures it doesn't even show off, and in person, meh, you can barely see it, but hey, I tried. In other hand, to give some depth to his face, I'm using some black pastel to create some kind of a separation between the cheek and the jawbone. Turns out that my black pastel is not that black, it is more of a very, very dark grey. Who knew? I'm also adding some pastel to the mouth, because I felt like the teeth were very close together. Also, this will help me to create the natural lip shadow. Since the eyes are completely black, I'm using a nail glossy top coat to give it a natural eye shine. I didn't want to paint the catch lights this time. The gloss was more than enough and it looks more realistic. On his makeup, Jupiter added some sequins here and there, but since I don't have extra small sequins, I'll use golden rhinestones. First, I'm adding drops of super glue, and then glue the crystals, obviously keeping the symmetry always. The face is done, so now it's time to continue with the body. 
Again, I'm marking the bones with my golden pencil, trying to make it very carefully, because even when I sanded down the body, applied like 4 layers of paint and 3 of sealant, the paint chips off very easily. And once I have my base, I'll start painting the body the exact same way I did with the face. I really love how this technique looks, because you're giving the idea of the shapes when you look from far away, but up close you can see all those little details. As I told you, this looks easy to do, but it does have a level of precision. Well, at least in my mind it does. I'm also playing with the thickness of the dots. There are areas where I make them more chunky, but on the edges I try to make them very thin and tiny, just like on the hands. And I'm glad this is time-lapsed, so you can watch how much my hands were shaking. And once the front of the body is done, watch me glue on the rhinestones while my cap keeps popping on the frame. Yay for me! Time to crown this king. Using my silicon mat, I trace a line after measuring the circumference of the head, and start making the crown with hot glue. This was very easy to make, because it looks like the actual crown of Jupiter was made this way. After the base is done, it's time to add the peaks, and adding some intentional hot glue strings in between. Off camera, I'll glue on both ends together. After that, first paint the entire crown black. And later, with golden paint. I really love how this crown turned out. And, well, I wasn't planning to paint the back, but the moment I turned the doll I saw how sad and empty it looked. I knew I had to do something. So with more paint and Jesus' blessing, I painted more and more bones. Also, I was planning on leaving him bald, but those root holes drive me crazy. So I glued on some black hair. This is how the back turned out. And the legs which I also improvised a little. Since the hairline was looking kinda wonky, I decided to cover it up. Not that I need to, because the crown hides it, but well, I did it. <laughs> With some glue, and then add black glitter. Time for some clothes. On Jupiter's pictures, you can only see the makeup from the waist up, so everything on this point is open for interpretation. My initial idea was to make him a kimono, and for this I asked for help to my friend Ugo, that makes the most amazing kimonos in real life. I needed his advice to know how to make the patterns, which is what you are watching now. And this is how the patterns look. And this is the final kimono. I made it with the same fabric of my Snake King, and, well, this wasn't working. The difference of the golden tones of the body and the fabric are really off. All those details I made with the body are covered up, and the silhouette... Ugh, it looks terrible, let's admit it. So off with the kimono. Then, for the bottom, I had like the worst time making up an idea. So I decided to make a skirt. I wanted the skirt to be asymmetrical, so I cut a piece of synthetic sweat with a curve. I'll sew it to a piece of platter, and also cut a rectangular piece of suede again. And I'll add this piece of pleated fabric. A mess, I know it, it looks terrible. So I decided to go for something more simple yet efficient. A loose long skirt with some leg action on the side. I cut a piece of the same synthetic suede and sew a pair of snaps for closure. And then to add a little bit more I'll make a belt. Cut a long piece of pleather and then, using some rings, I'll make a harness-looking thinner piece. Once done, I'll sew both pieces together. Looking very good, very good. We're getting somewhere. And to finish, I'll grab more rings.
and use them to add some chains that will be hanging. I just need to close the rings with my pliers. And my Jupiter doll is finally complete. I must say that I believe this is one of those dolls that don't involve a lot of colors or extreme techniques, but is very aesthetically pleasing to see. I've always loved that contrast between black and gold, it looks so dramatic. And for my friend Hannah, she made a rendition of this pink skull. This was such a fun collab, I had a blast working with her, so go on and watch her video. The link to her channel is down in the description box. What do you think about this pair? Also, do you have a favorite makeup artist? Let me know down in the comments. And well, that's up for today. But as always, don't forget to support the workshop by liking this video. Remember that sharing is caring. Subscribe and turn on your notifications. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next time. Kira out.